Today's artists are a resourceful lot, recycling everything from used canvases to the back of their sketch pads. And I promise to help the environment by not recycling any old jokes. <laughs> you said that last time. Four candles. It's Portrait Artist of the Year. Competing in today's heat are nine artists chosen for their skill and originality. But they'll have to prove they are up to the task of winning this year's prize. A £10,000 commission to paint Grammy-winning violinist Nicola Benedetti for the Scottish National Portrait Gallery. Four of today's artists are professional. Harriet Selka, Lucy Threlfall, Lionel Playford and Tom Cofed. Are you worried about the time? I was feeling pretty good until you came over. Well, I mean, so... you know... That's great. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> and there are five amateur artists. Leonardo Santalamazza, Rob Burton, Emily Schofield, Holly McCann, and Lois Laie. This is the same struggle that I felt with my self-portrait. Going over things, doing over things, you know. Oh, artists. I, I was... <laughs> <laughs> As the artists prepare for the day ahead, the judges remind themselves of the self-portraits. Judges, let's consider the first. My mother always said that if you pulled a face and the wind changed, it would stick. But I, I'm pleased the wind changed. I really love this work. The colour's fantastic, but you've got spots, you've got stripes, and you've got a good head as well. I'm constantly amazed what you can do with charcoal. It really is a head in action, but it's also very delicate and very sensitive. Complete contrast. It's very sort of... <laughs> in a really interesting way. It's authenticity and it's honesty. Mm. It's the charm of it. But that shirt is the star of the portrait. It's so tender. It's so plaintive. I love everything about it. I like the touches of light on the lips and the nose, the grain of the afro. You really get the ranting mad prophet look. He gets his message across. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's compelling, isn't it? The way that we're getting a really good look up this guy's nostrils. <laughs> Artists have often used snow as a way to play with light, and he does that so beautifully in this painting. I just think this is a gorgeous little treasure. There's really fierce concentration in her observing herself and the paint actually feeling like skin, and that's quite alchemical to be able to make one substance seem like another substance. Another square is Indian ink with felt tip. I was fascinated by the freckles. Mm. It's almost like the ink has been whispered onto the page. I think it's really intelligent to use this background to give it this bold quality. And here we have tribute to Rembrandt, I think. So much energy and attention has gone onto that hand with the paintbrush. Well, that's a nice dynamic to have a rectangle and then an oval and then the head's another oval sitting within it. So he's playing with shapes as well. Mm. Good. Well, it remains to be seen what they make of all this today. Artists, your sitter today is a world-renowned journalist, author and broadcaster who rose to national prominence as Tony Blair's communication chief. It's Alastair Campbell. Hey, uh. hey, how are you? Hello. Hello. Have a seat. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm cold. I've been in the Lido for half an hour. Yeah, you do a lot of swimming, running, I do, walking. Yeah. How's sitting still going to be for four hours? So we're allowed to move about and stuff, aren't we? I mean, no? they prefer you not to, right, but they don't okay. want you fidgeting. OK. Have you had a portrait painter before? I've got two at home, but they're both behind the sofa. I do think there's something a bit vain about having your own portrait or your own wall. Right. So what's going to happen to this one today? Well, it will depend whether it's really, really good or not. Oh, there you go. He's really on it already. Ready they will be... <laughs> you will be intensely studied all yeah. day long. Good. I'll leave you to the artist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank good you. luck. Hey, so how do you want me to pose? Personally, I'd like it if you could stay in a similar position the whole time. And do we talk? Yeah, we can chat a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Artists, today's sitter first shone in the hit series Years and Years. 
but her performance in Channel 4's drama series, It's a Sin, actually created its own hashtag, Be More Jill. Please welcome the actress Lydia West. <laughs> You played this wonderful woman, Jill. Yes, so Jill Baxter is based on a real-life person called Jill Nolder, and she did visit all the wards of the hospitals and do all the marches. This is about the AIDS crisis, wasn't it? Yeah, during the AIDS epidemic in the 80s. Well, that's very nice to welcome you here. You have to sit still all day. Yes. Are you used to that? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> at all. I'm going to hand you over to the artist to discuss what pose you take. So long as you're comfortable and you feel relaxed. I feel relaxed. like I could sit here for four hours Good. like this. I don't want to yeah. cross my legs or anything. No. <laughs> Artists, your sitter has not only won a Brit Award, written a best-selling album and been nominated for an Oscar, but she achieved all these things in the space of a year. It's the spectacular Celeste. Wow. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm so excited. Great. Yeah. This is your idea of fun, sitting still for four hours. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'm going to try my best. <laughs> yeah. What are you looking for today? Are you looking for something flattering? In portraits, what I find that I'm attracted to is when you can see something in that person that perhaps isn't there at face value. Well, it's time for the artist to pose you. OK. I'll leave you to it. Where, where will you be looking? I could be like here with my eyes like Wonderful. Here. That gives me all the glory. <laughs> <laughs> Artists, you have four hours to complete your challenge and your time starts now. It's a nice um, expression you've got. Very sort of serene and regal. Thanks. What did Michelangelo do before mobile phones? Yeah. How, how did he even do it? Today's artists are using a range of media, from charcoal to pencil, and from acrylic with glue to oil paints. What's with the hairdryer? Oh, I need to dry the paint so I can start drawing on it. Oh, OK. Most artists prefer a blank canvas. But today, one is doing her bit for the environment. So, Lucy, did you not think to get a new canvas for today? <laughs> It's an old reject. I often use old canvases uh -huh. because they've got some energy in them already. You're not dealing with a terrifying blank white canvas. Okay. Yeah, it's just to spark off the imagination, really. Lucy Threlfall paints commissions in her converted barn in Royston. Having studied art history and traditional painting methods in Florence, she took up printmaking and a more contemporary style. I see you've got a quite comprehensive list of instructions there. Yeah. You know, I'm nervous. Fair enough. So just remind myself what's important. OK. Yeah. Do not rush is in capitals. Keep paint thin is yeah. in capitals. Yeah. Uh, get some weirdness in. Get some weirdness in. Yeah. What does that mean? When you're looking at a painting, you want your eye to be excited. Well, I mean, you want your eye to be excited. Yeah. Got a great sitter, haven't you? Yep. There's a lovely tilt to her head, so I want to get that right. And I want to place her which I've done wrong already. Oh, OK. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's harder for them because they have these scowling creatures looking at them. Yes. But, um... Do you have smile written on your list? No, it's point? not there. OK, maybe I'll write that in later. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> I'm very competitive. I want one of you three to win. <laughs> I have down a big block of colour and then I've drawn the face as quickly as I can, make sure I've got a likeness so I can start painting the big shapes of colour. My strategy is to go as fast as I can. <laughs> Emily Schofield is studying illustration at Leeds University and hosts her own online shop and channel. She enjoys combining bright colours with interesting backgrounds. 
morning, Emily. Good morning. Um, so you've kind of lucked out on the basis of your submission with that fantastic pink that yeah. the set today is. Very this... lucky, yeah. And you made that pink background quite early today, did you? Oh, yeah, that was like in the first two minutes. And I'm interested to know whether or not you've got enough space there to do some of the decorative work that you did um, on your submission. I don't know whether I'll have the time to do that, but I'll definitely, I'm not going to leave it like that. Yeah. Uh, another colour will go on top of it. OK. Because I put down like a layer of glue before I start painting. When I put the acrylic on top and dry it, it makes it crack. Oh. And I really like the way that looks, so I'll make sure to keep some of these cracked elements. Yeah, in. nice. Well, wonderful. Nice start. Thank you. Hello, Tom. I imagine sort of a hairy, ranting prophet <laughs> who's going to tell me I'm doomed. So it's, it's Absolutely quite... not. Now, is it the same surface you did yourself portrait on? Yeah, it's just brown parcel paper, very environmentally friendly. I started working on it last year because I was terrified. I didn't want to spend money. Yeah. No, <laughs> so I know. I was just like, I've got parcel paper, I've got, I've got the backs of loads of sketchbooks. Does it give you a certain freedom as well, then? Yeah. So if it goes wrong, then you just... I tell you, some of my best drawings are done on envelopes or exactly. all letters. Yeah, and actually, yeah. when I come to doing a really a nice, proper drawing, yeah. it's terrifying. Yeah, I think they're like, not being too worried about it being precious. Yes. Tom Cofed lives in Hastings, where he's painted a self-portrait every January since turning 30. His submission reflects how tough and colourless the year 2020 was and how things were now on the up. Your self-portrait is very sort of large. You decided to do Lydia quite small. And then I see in your paints, it won't necessarily be a monochrome painting like your self-portrait. No, I'm going to work in colour. You are, I like that. That was yeah. a real yeah, statement. It's of, you're going to work in colour. Yeah. Smaller, different from your really, self-portrait, yeah. with colour. Yeah. It's all very exciting. It is, <laughs> hopefully. Who knows? <laughs> As if one portrait wasn't enough of a challenge, one artist has sketched two but then he has a lot to live up to. Leonardo. Leonardo Santolomazza. Santolomazza. Yes. Irish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sheffield. Sheffield. Oh. Where are you from? From Rome. Rome? Yeah. And you call Leonardo. I mean, yeah. that's a cracking start for an yeah, artist. it's a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> Leonardo, or Leo Santolomazza, studied architecture and was a kitchen designer before moving to Cornwall to manage an art supply shop. His self-portrait in charcoal took six hours. What are the challenges of painting somewhere like Alistair? I know it's quite easy, actually. Yeah, strong, strong, strong features. features. Strong features. Yeah. The nose, it's a big feature. Yeah, the nose. Roman. And Roman, the Roman nose. nose. Very Roman <laughs> nose. And you have two of them. <laughs> yeah, you loved it so much. You can see something else about the personality, a different point of view. He looks stressed in both. <laughs> <laughs> the artists are almost an hour into today's heat. I'm very happy with Alistair. He's got a really interesting face with lots of wrinkles. <laughs> and, um, and then I just character. What are the wrinkles? <laughs> Sorry. My biggest concern is to try and just to, to finish, you know, sort of half an hour ahead of time. I mean, maybe, not really, but... <laughs> I'm most anxious about not making a very good painting and it being on the telly. But I think if I can get the likeness in my drawing, then I have zero fears. I feel completely fine. Absolutely fine. This is totally normal. <laughs> Artists have been working for an hour on their portraits of Lydia West, Alistair Campbell and Celeste. Rob, would it make any difference to you if Celeste moved this right arm? Um, no, I, I'm not doing the arms. It won't so, matter? So, no, no, that's fine. If this arm is just gently relaxed... A bit more this way. Thank you. It's nice painting alongside others. I thought it would be more stressful. And Celeste is probably the best sitter that you could ask for. I mean, she's got such a great personality and she's got the most amazing hair and wearing an amazing outfit. It ticks all the boxes for me. 
Rob Burton is from Cambridgeshire and studies at the Royal College of Music. His self-portrait in oils took 10 hours, but given today's time limit, he's going off-piste. Hi, Rob. I can see some oils on the board, but so far, just pencil. Yeah, so I usually start off by sketching out in oil paint, but I decided today to do it in pencil. Why change your...? Oh, I don't know. Stress, <laughs> seeing what happens and okay. hoping I remember how to paint. Oh, you'll remember how to paint. <laughs> how hard can it be? It's quite hard, yeah. <laughs> Um, so next, I'm actually going to block in with acrylic, which I have never done before either. What are you then going to get out of the lino cut, even though yeah. you've never done that either <laughs> before? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I love this, don't give uh, me ideas. I love this sort of expensive adventure you're bringing. Yeah. And then I'm going to go in with oil. Well, I wish you well. I can't wait to see how you get on. Thank you very much. What's your big stick? Um, it's called a mall stick. A mall stick? Mall or, or mall. Okay. Mall stick. But it's so when you lean, you're not sticking your hand on the painting. It just, you lean it on the edge or on the easel and it just keeps it clean. Good. Fingers crossed. Harriet Selker is originally from Huddersfield. Having studied fine art at Edinburgh, she's now at the Essential School of Painting, experimenting with abstract and conceptual art. Harriet, you're doing a full length. You're stopping short of the coloured socks, I noticed. So my socks aren't going to make it, Harriet? Well, they are just probably going to make it just in. <laughs> but that is a really competent drawing. You've not got much paint on there yet. No, I haven't. I'm basically just going to be painting the flesh of the hands and face. I think I'm probably going to leave the background white. <laughs> OK. What's Alistair like as a sitter? Marvellous. He's mouthing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Lois, tell me about the black paper. The black paper kind of comes from childhood. It's like the first fascination of seeing how bright a colour can look on black paper. <laughs> I wish I knew the method to my madness, but I don't. Lois Laye is studying computer science at Brunel University. Her self-portrait in oil pastels took two weeks to create. I feel like you guys are a real gang in this section. Oh. I've never seen a bunch of artists <laughs> and a sitter work so well together. 100%. You know, we all want to give her the best portrait that we can give her, so... So no yeah. pointy elbows sort of pushing no these two up? No! Well, I don't know. Maybe there's ulterior motives. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think we've got each other's backs. I think we've got each other's backs, yeah. Well, that's really good. So sort of encouraging each other on to yeah. do the best for Celeste. Yeah. That's exactly how it feels. Ty, I'm enjoying the sumptuous palette of colours behind our sitters today. They are very beautiful. They're based on the colours of flowers, if you were to sort of break them down like an artist would. So we've got an iris daffodil, and then we have the sumptuous rose. What I think is fabulous about Anison, which I hadn't noticed, he has got this fantastic nose. And it took the Roman artist to spot that. I would see that that would be something to get your teeth into. Yes, <laughs> get your teeth into <laughs> Alistair Campbell's nose. He's painting two of them as well, so we're getting four noses <laughs> from three artists. OK. That's a good nose-to-artist ratio. That is, and, and, and good for the show, yes. Yeah. Lydia is sat in front of a yellowy, mustardy palette. Is that a helpful thing? Artists like to work with contrast, of course. And because Lydia's skin tones and what she's wearing are very close to the background, it makes it very difficult. But sometimes it's nice to throw in something and say, make something interesting out of this. Celeste is bedecked in flowers. It's a fantastic outfit. Her hair is just so beautiful, and I think the artists are really responding to that. Can I just quickly say, also, flowers have got this role in art history as uh, their symbols as a memento mori. Um, we are all doomed. Yes, the short blossoming of a flower and of our life, yes, and then the long, the... slow, withering, drying up, <laughs> desiccating, <laughs> yes, falling to the ground, and, <laughs> and then starting to smell and rot. Yes. Where right. are we, do you think, on that scale? <laughs> I don't even... I don't want to even go there. We're, yes, <laughs> slightly brown round the edges. OK, I'll take that at this stage. <laughs> I'm hoping that they capture my essence, just that the portrait speaks to me. And yeah, just something really fun and cool and vibrant, but also very emotional and deep. So, <laughs> not asking for much, am I? Oh, 
Art was probably my second worst subject at school. I'm very jealous of people who are good at it to watch three people doing totally different things and having totally different effect on the people who are coming around to see what they're doing. It's really interesting. You feel nervous about looking at them? I feel really nervous about looking at them. Do you? Yeah, and choosing. I think you're all just really lovely, and I want to choose the right person based on the painting, so it feels like a little responsibility. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that the background represents daffodils because I use flowers and leaves in all of my backgrounds. I feel like it adds a bit more like personality to the portraits that I'm doing. Holly McCann is a graphic design student from Burgess Hill. Her self-portrait took six hours and was created in pencil, then Indian ink with a felt tip background. Holly, you're using pencil now or is it ink now? Ink, yeah. And is there any room for error with this ink? Uh, no. Right. <laughs> so, so it could go wrong. <laughs> so you have to be quite thoughtful and slow with the work that you're making, because if you're a painter, you could slap it on and take it back off again. Yeah. When I do the pencil sketch, I make sure that it's in proportion and kind mm. of looks like her, so that hopefully when I do the ink, it turns out OK. <laughs> OK. Well, nice yeah. start. Well, Lionel, never have we had such a shock. The bright green painting that you had there. Why did you do that? It was just a, a, a drawing device, really. The green contrasts with anything that's reddish and, and orangish, which means I can see it. And that green will show through, and it won't completely disappear. And I think it's something that could actually unite the whole thing. Lionel Playford is a naval architecture graduate who produces art for environmental organisations. His self-portrait in oils referenced Rembrandt. But today, a beautiful young female sitter requires a different approach. Got smooth, rosy, youthful cheeks. That's right. So beautiful. Yes, so I have to be careful about not making it look too rugged. But on the other hand, I don't want an airbrush look. I want to show you something about what I understand, about what I can see. And that's the direction of these planes. Are you going to finish in time? Going to have to speed up. It's almost halfway through the four-hour heat. Lucy, you trained under the Florence School, but I can see you've taken some liberties with the colours. Yeah, it's something that I hope I've moved forward from, just to be a bit more imaginative with use of colour. OK, it's almost perfect. Should I stop? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> The fact that Alice is on his phone a lot is not ideal because I'm trying to paint from life, so every kind of small change of angle, all the colours and the shadows change, so that is a challenge that I'm facing. I was having quite a panic before when I painted the first eye because it just didn't really go to plan, but I've added a few marks to it now and I don't hate it anymore. <laughs> It's two hours in for artists painting Lydia West, Celeste, and Alistair Campbell. Alistair, good news. Yeah. You've got socks. Excellent. <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through, how are we feeling about the day? Trepidatious, but good, generally, yes. Well, we have Alistair Campbell being painted by Leo, Emily, and Harriet. Yes. Emily. Conspicuously pink. Mm. Conspicuously pink, but Emily's also introduced these wonderful dibby-dabby bits of colour. And I was finding it quite jarring to start with, but he's really starting to emerge quite strongly now. Whereas Leo's getting the essence of Alistair, but I do want to see the magical mark-making that was appearing in his submission. Lydia is young and beautiful and looks quite alert. And I really enjoy the fact that Tom's caught Lydia's direct gaze. There's definitely some artists that have come today and are really mixing it up. I think my only worry about Lionel's work is that she looks a bit sad. Not only sadder, but older. <laughs> now, let's look at Rob's. I don't mean to be rude, but there's something a bit cartoonish about it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> 
it creates a kind of contemporary feel. The colours are beautiful. Mm. I think Rob's on it. Absolutely. They've all established a really fantastic relationship with Celeste as well and with each other. Mm. And I think Lois, here we have a really strong connection between the artist and the sitter. What she's done is very good, but there's a lot more to do, and I'm surprised it's taking her so long. Yeah. And Lucy has gone to the other extreme. It's just so powerful and so arresting already. The paint is going on beautifully. The harmonies are really nice. What's there is pretty amazing. It certainly is. I love it so much. <laughs> I don't want her to, to, to ruin it. I think it's going to be a rough ride. Just the way we like it. <laughs> I think I'm probably a bit fidgety, but I'm trying my best. And every now and then, I'll just do a little shimmy and a deep breath and then try to sit back down. When you are an actor, you're used to playing a role and telling stories and using your imagination, but there's a rawness of bringing your own self to a situation that's not what I do for a living, so I quite enjoy it. It feels very refreshing. I'm learning a lot. I didn't realise that you needed hair dryers to paint. Leo's been using that hairspray, so I have a hair dryer, hairspray, and ha hairiat. Harriet's been, a sense, the most traditional. When an artist has a distinct style, it's often down to the way they explore colour and texture. Leo, so there seems to be a wetness sometimes. You make yes. marks somehow, make and marks. I don't, I've never seen that done before. Yeah, when I want to get some light, I just add some water to a yes. brush and just remove the dust. So it creates something like an outline. Which is very beautiful. So instead of the rubber, it takes it off in a more dynamic way, in yeah. fact. Telling us all your secrets, it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Rob, looking at your self-portrait, you have that wonderful softness of the hood around yeah. your face. With Celeste and that hair, it's mm. almost as if you can recreate that same Yeah, exactly, mood. yes. What I like in paintings is when the face is kind of more refined and then the outside is a bit more loose. So I, hopefully I'll be able to do a bit of that in this. I mean, I haven't worked oil over acrylic in, in a long time, so I'm hoping it'll work. Taking risks, that's what we exactly. like. Exactly. <laughs> A successful portrait makes you believe it was planned that way all along, but sometimes comes from agonising choices taken along the way. Now, Holly, you've just got out the felt tips. Yeah. I guess that there's a moment of decision is arriving here. Yeah, normally I do, like, flowers and, like, branches and stuff in the background. I usually do it because it kind of contrasts with the harsh black-and-white portrait. So I'm conflicted with just doing that like normal or using the stripes in it. What choice you make will absolutely determine the impact of your portrait. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it could make or break it. <laughs> Tom, the background, you've just ignored it, I see, so far. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to pretend it's not there. OK, that's a good way to deal with <laughs> life's problems, isn't yeah, it? I just pretend so. they don't exist. Um, we are fairly far advanced into the day. There's quite a lot of... OK. Uh, feels aggressive. ..of your board <laughs> that is yet to be... Uh, yeah. are, you, are you worried about the time? I was feeling pretty good until you came over. Well, I mean, so you know... That's uh, great. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> Lois, pastel's supposed to be a really fast medium, <sighs> isn't it? <laughs> This is the same struggle that I felt with my self-portrait. Going over things, doing over things, you know. Oh, artists. I, I <laughs> <laughs> you are really only concentrating on this face. I mean, there is the background, There's, there is a hair. Yeah. Is there a possibility by concentrating on something else that you recalibrate your eye? Is that, is that maybe something one could look at? <laughs> oh, <wisdom. laughs> Do some other stuff and then get on with it. Do some other stuff. The artists have half an hour left to finish their work. Bob, you've used these colours so beautifully. Is there anything you're not going to touch that you think, OK, I don't want to mess that up? <laughs> I'm not going to rule anything out, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have a likeness. I'm just trying to make sure I don't lose that. 
need to do the other half of him, put a little tone on the chair, finish his chin and ear. It's tight, but I think if I stay extremely focused, I'll be okay. The artists are adding their finishing touches to portraits of actress Lydia West, journalist Alistair Campbell, and singer-songwriter Celeste. How are you doing, Lois? I'm freaking out. You just have to believe in yourself. Yeah. Lucy, what are you thinking? It's still quite rough and blockish. Mm. That's probably a good thing. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> She's a little bit German expressionist, a bit, a bit Kirchner. Is that problematic? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I've never painted so quick in my life. I might just go in and tone back a bit of the pink. I need to make sure the face is the focal point, not the background. I'm worried about mixing the wrong colour. This is quite important. Under a bit of pressure. Artists, you have five minutes left. <laughs> five minutes. I'm getting there sort of in the last sprint to try and get everything finished. I'm definitely running out of time. I don't feel like I'm getting to the end of the portrait. Mm. <laughs> I think it's finished. I'm happy with that. And I won't touch it. <laughs> Artists, your time is up. Please put down your brushes and stand away from your portraits. Oh, my gosh. That is so nice. Well <laughs> done. You managed to finish. It's finished. <laughs> Celeste, you did it. Do you have any idea what's waiting for you? I've seen glimpses here and there, but I've really tried to just walk past really quickly. Are you nervous? I think I'm more nervous now than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I think the time has come. Artists, please turn your easels. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh this is so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and have a closer look, shall we? Okay. The colours are beautiful. Beautiful, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I really like this a bit more lilac in the background. Quite a serious look there. Very serious. Yeah. I have quite a serious it's... way about me. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. I really actually appreciate the likeness in this. I think it's flattering, and I think that's really, really clever. Yeah. A compliment. It's <laughs> not bad, is it? Yeah. No, my heart is Well cool. done. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm so happy for you that you painted this. Aww. Yeah, I love how there's some clarity in it, but it all kind of blurs and sort of intertwines and dances with each other. And I think Aww. it's really amazing. Thank you. Right, Celeste, Rob, <laughs> Lois, and Lucy are on tender hooks. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that my favourite art of all three is Lucy's. Well done, Lucy. <laughs> OK, you can relax, Lydia. How do yes. you feel? Good, really good. You've remained serene and beautiful throughout. Thank Has you. it been taxing? I just got into a really meditative state. So, you have to make a choice of paintings. Yes, Artists, I haven't seen anything. turn round your easels. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Wow. <gasps> <laughs> Oh, my God, this is so difficult. <laughs> oh, I hate this. Let's take a closer look. I love the texture in the hair. I, I feel like you've seen into, into myself <laughs> through my eyes. It's so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. It, it just it looks like me. <laughs> it's such an accurate representation of me. I think it's gorgeous. You've done Thank such you. a good job. <laughs> 
I love all the line work and kind of the minimalism of it. It's very contemporary and brilliant. And now you have to choose between three totally different styles. OK. I came in with the idea of giving it to my mum, but then it's just come over me that I want one for myself. <laughs> so I have to follow my gut, and that's going to be Tom. I love it so much. Thank you. Artists, can I ask you, please, to turn your easels? Oh, my God. Ooh. God. I mean, it's quite incredible, because they're all completely different, but yeah. you can see that they've been working from <laughs> basically the same raw material. Oh, they're all you. Oh, I don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get two Alistair Campbells for the price of one. Leah, you like my nose, don't you? Yes. I think the device of the two heads, yeah. but not a mirror, it's not the same. I really like that. Fantastic. Well, this Alistair has dignity, it's got seriousness, it's got a melancholy. I think you've definitely got something in the eyes there that gets into the soul. Yeah, it's very um, soulful, yeah. A very youthful Alistair Campbell, very clean. <laughs> not that you're not clean. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is the one that gave me the most kind of wow because it was just not at all what I expected. I'm glad the socks made it. Just. just. <laughs> they sneaked in at the end. Right, it's decision time. I'm going for that one. Well done, Emily. Oh, <laughs> As the artists relax, the judges examine the work they produced today. I was really nervous for Lucy today because this was just spectacular this morning. Mm. And I'm delighted to say it, it stayed spectacular. The tonalities are beautiful, the colours are stunning, and I love the fact that she caught this melancholy. I wish that Lois had just managed to give us a little bit more than just that head floating in space. Having said that, there's a very young, vibrant Celeste that she's caught. I think Rob's colour palette is really the thing that excites me here. All of these different purple and lilac tones all buzzing around. There was a point in the afternoon where it looked better, but as such, it's a brilliant portrait. I think Harriet's portrait of Alistair isn't a great likeness, but Alistair's got a body, you know, and mm -hmm. weight. Yeah, I think that she's made him look younger, mm. and it makes, surprises me that he therefore didn't choose that one. <laughs> Emily's portrait of Alistair, I mean, it's a fantastic nice, but there's no flattery here. It really has given him a certain jowly florentus. <laughs> but I think what she has flattered him with is gravitas. I must say Leo's likeness of Alistair isn't really working for me. What I do like is his inventiveness when it comes to mark making. I think he's really good at getting a sense of movement. Tom's caught something which is sweet, quite sensitive. Should he have put some colour on the background? Maybe it would have made it a bit more weighty. Having said that, I think it is an incredibly intimate portrait of Lydia, and she is connecting with us. I think Holly's version of Lydia is fabulous. She's really caught me in her gaze. I'm not sure about the flower print in the background. I thought Lionel's sketch this morning was just fabulous, full of energy, love the colour of it. It lost a lot of that lightness, didn't it? I think that he caught, though, the sense of Lydia in her own thoughts. Okay. After considering all nine portraits, the judges must narrow down their favourites to three. And for once, they're unanimous. I immediately feel this feels too slight to compete with everything else. It doesn't help that the likeness isn't quite there. I'm going to move yeah. this, and then we just get the three together and see how they look. Have we made another perfect exhibition? I think we have. This is very... <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> very good looking. Yeah, hot top three. Artists, thank you for working so hard all day and for giving us so much pleasure. The judges have arrived at their short list of three. The first artist is... Emily Schofield. <laughs> Thank you.
The second artist is Lucy Threlfall. <laughs> the third artist to be shortlisted is Rob Burton. The shortlisted artists are incredible, and I am so pleased that Lydia chose my painting. I feel like I can show my mum, and I don't feel embarrassed by it. <laughs> to help choose their winner, the judges look at the original submissions alongside today's paintings. Judges, we've got very different personalities in the sitters and very different personalities in the artists. What a mix. You're right, they've all painted within their style. But today, they've been reacting to the sitter, in a sense, and changing what they usually do. For example, in Lucy's work, there's a very stern connection with the viewer, and the lighting is very stark, whereas today, Celeste is in dreamland, and there's a softness there. But it's very clearly by the same artist. I think Lucy really benefited from the intensity of the day, actually. I think she's so used to being in her own studio, she had to bear in mind the other artists painting alongside her. And I think it injected a sense of urgency. I think it made her push her style a little bit further. And all to the good, actually. Yeah, I prefer Lucy's today than her submission, and I prefer Emily's today more than her submission. Alistair was slightly stunned. He said, I look in your portrait the way that I feel. Yeah. Mm. I think Emily got such a good likeness of Alistair. Essentially, she comes from an illustrator's background, so she's good at capturing likeness quickly. And that then gives her the freedom to be creative with everything else that goes around it, as we saw with the pink. She's a very mature artist for her age. Rob gives a fantastic sense of movement in his self-portrait. It's a little flatter today. I think the thing about Rob is it's just a different kind of painting because the submission is so distinctive. You know, a very snowy, bright, white, wintry submission. But what we don't see here is Rob as a fantastic colourist, and we see that in this work. But actually, he's not only very good at constructing paintings and getting the weight of the body in the space right, but there's also a very powerful mood, and I think it's remarkable. So what we've seen is that each of them stopped at the right point. Yeah, but you can't stop. We need a decision. Mm. Rob, Emily, Lucy, you all deserve to have made it through to the shortlist. But there's only one place in the semi-final. The artists that the judges have selected caught both the spirit and the likeness of their sitter, but very much on their own terms. That artist is... Lucy Threlfall. Wow, I can't quite believe it. I'm just a bit stunned. I'm going to collapse in a big gelatinous heap and it might involve a glass of wine. Lucy is a well-deserved winner. She paints how I want to paint when I'm a bit older. From the start, Lucy's painting was one of my favorites. I'm so thrilled for her because she's also the most lovely person. Lucy gave us the most beautiful portrait of Celeste today. It was sensitive, it was spiritual, and I just know that with that Florence training and the way in which she's pushing those boundaries, she's going to give us something really special at the semi-final. Doing it all over again. Oh, my God, I can't contemplate that at the moment. But, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it.